Welcome back, everybody, to TCS Ladder League Recaps. And this is it, folks. This is really it. We're down to just two weeks left. This is super, super exciting. We have two uh, or six total runners left, two matches this week. And it's like we started at 24, and to only be down to six in the ladder right now is crazy. Um, this is going to be really exciting. Every match now is to the uttermost importance for survival uh, or advancement. Um, so these guys are going to have to be really locked in. Uh, I do want to add a little bit of bonus onto the end of this video, uh, this recap, because uh, this one's going to be kind of short, right? There's three matches to review, two matches to predict. So we're just going to start with that. And then I got a little bit bonus of some extra stuff I want to talk about. Um, but yeah, we'll start from week six recap. And we're going to talk about this bottom match right here, Jablinki Hamster Garrison, which honestly, this was the only really race where there was like a really close finish. Um, unlike the previous weeks where we had so, so exciting close finishes. This week, it was a little bit more tame on the uh, close finish side. Um, to start with Garrison, uh, he gets the 238.50 and is eliminated from the tournament. He really wasn't a factor in this race. Uh, he missed pod fraud early on, which just really hurt. And it was kind of like, in my mind from there, it was kind of like, yeah, he's really out of it at this point because he's going to have to put on a performance. I mean, obviously, you see the times that Blakey and Hamster put up. He would have to put on a over five minute PB performance to even compete and missing pod fraud that's not yeah um so yeah i was pretty set that garrison was gonna be out of the race and i just want to touch on garrison real quick because obviously he finishes out here in week six a very very good tournament from him overall obviously can't just judge him by that performance he had a very strong tournament outperformed the seed he was playing at xbox which is a whole nother struggle compared to you know playing on pc different uh tricks different game you're starting with a different time you're gonna have a different mentality it's you know Good for him for being able to muster this far on that sort of setup. Um, but yeah, very, very good for him. He makes it pretty far. I'm sure he's not, like, obviously disappointed you're going to be out at this stage, but you can't be disappointed at the overall performance of this tournament, you know. Playing six weeks in the in the ladder, uh, and I believe, I'm trying to look back, he was as low as, like, potentially elimination ladder. So he started here, let's see, Garrison, it was as early as week three that he could have gone down to the bottom rung, and he survived all the way until week six, finally going down to the bottom rung. So impressive on him for doing that. Um, so yeah, definitely not a turn of performance to be disappointed about. Um, but yeah, anyways, moving on to the Jablaki versus the Hamster race, which, once again, this is the eight seed going in Jablaki and the 10 seed Hamster. We're going to have to see one of them go in week six. That is really, really, really crazy to, to, to think about, as well as because the Hamster's PBs, outside of the tournament, have gone down to a 224 at this point, which is significantly better than uh, Jablaki, EJP Man, the guys who are kind of the outright favorites for the 8 seed. So it's crazy to see him, one, in the bottom rung, but two, in a match where either him or Jablaki are getting out, you're seeing one of the main two competitors for the top 8 seed going out as early as week 6. Uh, mainly ripple effects from the Jablaki loss back in week 4 against Garrison Revelo. But anyways, we see... One of these guys has to go out. Um, it was a back and forth match the whole time. I mean, uh, Jabla I think the Hamster had the early lead out of one. Jablaki had the lead out of two. Jablaki had the lead out of four. Slightly lead out of six. Then Hamster had the lead out of three. And it wasn't until five where Hamster started getting separation. And I believe going into Bespin, it was around a minute for Hamster. Which, in a lead, that's pretty good. But then he has an absolute disaster on... Uh, not disaster, sorry, I shouldn't say that. He has a big mistake on GTF where he misses the the line for the trigger. And then he has to uh, completely redo the trick. Which, it's cost him 30 plus seconds and made this race a little bit interesting to the, towards the end. It's not enough for Jablaki to come back in Bespin though. So, really, really good race. I mean, you can't falter Jablaki here too much because he played really really good up to his pb um hopefully this sort of run kind of motivates him because like yes you didn't win but you would have beaten pb without saves one and obviously you probably didn't play the early game or the middle game as well as you'd like to so you can probably go back and get a nice big pb there's like hamster is kind of like there's kind of a group of guys there's, there's the top seven uh in this tournament there's also burko and bacon who's also in between but um there's like this kind of gap between the top guys and then the other active players right now, like the Hamster, Laser, Harazmi, EJP Man, Jablaki, etc. 
and there's this gap and no one's really crossed that until recently where hamster went from a 226 to a 224 and he made just made the big leap across the gap and sorry i'm kind of rambling on and going but my point is i hope this at least inspires your leg like hey you know this run this can help me get across that gap because like this is the first step i'm already beating pb without saves or with saves sorry uh, and that's going to be the first step to getting across this gap. And I know he probably didn't think he played as well in the, in the beginning of the run as well. So, uh, I hope Jim Blakey can at least use this, uh, as an inspiration, to try to cross that gap, because I know he probably wanted the eight seed, especially as starting as the eight seed, you're going to at least want to make it into the top eight as the eight seed. The goal was not reached. In fact, in fact, reached, in fact, he's out, uh, week six. So unfortunate for Jim Blakey here, but, uh, hopefully he uses this to inspire himself to uh, get some better times across that gap to try to make it from, you know, that mid-tier runner to top-level runner, if that makes any sense. Um, anyways, but Hamster gets the win. Uh, 227.17, I believe this is his best race time, and trust me, he needed this one. He needed this best race time because Jablakey was on his game. Uh, obviously, Hamster's done a lot of good work uh, outside of the tournament, so this isn't, like, a complete shock to anyone that he gets a 227. Um... But yeah, he does he does the job. He has a solid race. There's obviously things that Hamster didn't like about there was a lot there was lots of splits that were just weird and like I know Jedi Battle Gunship, I remember watching those and be like, uh oh, is Hamster in trouble? Uh but he fought back. Um So yeah, I think I actually I'll get to it. I don't want to talk about the hamster top eight yet, potential, but uh he wins the match, he's gonna stay alive in the bottom rung. We haven't I don't think we've seen anyone in the bottom rung, win two weeks in a row. And Jablakey was definitely the favorite to be the first one to do that. Yeah, Nolan Zoda, Phantom, Charizard, Jablakey, Hamster. So yeah, um, Jablakey might have been the favorite to finally do that, but no. Will the Hamster break the curse next week? We'll get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, we'll move on to the next race. Uh, Jared Harazmi Revelo. This one just happened. Um, I'm recording this a couple hours after that one finished. Um, I saw bits and pieces of this one, but... I know Jared just pretty much dominated this race from the beginning. Uh, that's not a surprise by any means. It's the 3 seed versus the 13 and the 15. However, you shouldn't underestimate Harazmi and Revelo, but Jared definitely of uh, higher quality. He's got literally the world record right now, so there was no surprise to see him dominate this match. Yeah, it's not the best race time. It's not a bad race time, so nothing really to look into much on Jared here. He gets the win that he's supposed to get. Uh, and then, obviously, the big question was, how is this battle for second place going to go in this race? And unfortunately, Revelo just kind of didn't have a great run. It started The gap started opening up early on in Episode 2, and it just kind of inflated more and more to, compared to Erasmi. And he does lose. He That was the expected result, but I know uh, Revelo wanted to do a bit better than that. Um, mind you, Revelo being in this tournament in general still is crazy as the 15 seed. He's l literally still in Week 7. So, he's already made it extremely far, and now anything here on out for him is probably bonus. Of course, he's going to want to get that 8 seed. Uh, it's going to be tough now having the loss there. That was kind of one of the key matches he needed to uh, get a top 2 in, but he's still alive. Don't count him out yet. Um, I'd say definitely disappointed with this particular performance, but he's just got to keep practicing, moving on, doing runs. Um, he's not out of it yet. As for Harazmi, another kind of 232. He's gotten this sort of time a couple weeks in a row now. Um, it's not super impressive, right? Um, Harazmi just had this like big bang start to the tournament. He got a huge PB before the tournament started. Uh, got another big PB. Got a PB down to a sub 230. Was getting race times near his PB or at pacing PB. But the past three weeks, I know he had the issues weeks uh, week four. Uh, but then the past two weeks, it's been 232s, not great races. 232 is not cutting it right now to make the A seed. By no means. You're seeing Jablakey and Hamster getting 227s this week. EJP Man got a 226 at one point in this tournament. Um, uh, Laser just got a PB. It was a, it was a 227 outside the tournament. So there, that is not going to cut it at 232 right now for the eight seed. So I'm a little concerned on that front, but he gets a second place. He's in the top rung, so he's guaranteed him a spot in the week eight match at worst. So... Uh, you know, good for Razmi on that, but he's gonna have to really focus up, uh, to try to get you know because that week eight race is gonna be crazy. Um, a little underwhelmed with Razmi, but he gets he does the job, so um, good for him on that. I'll move on to the final race, Justin EJP Man and Laser. Uh, this one once again, 
kind of went to how I thought. You know, Justin pretty much dominated the whole race. He had some weird invasion stuff happen at the beginning. I'm like, oh, is this going to be a race? But then he ran away with it. No surprises there. He's locked into the sixth seed, into the top eight. As as we predicted, he would be in this top eight. Um, but yeah, he should be a big factor to come. I don't really have much to talk about on Justin here, except he's going to be in the top eight. Good race from him. Uh, and he plays Frost. But anyways, uh, the race between EJP Man and Laser was a very, very key one because now the top rung, the third place moves down to the bottom rung week seven because the bottom rung is rung two now. So uh, this is a big, big race for both EJP Man and Laser to try to get second place. And Laser misses Pod Prod and has to restart off the bat. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. Um, and the thing is, after Laser missed Pod Fraud, that gap to the end of the race really just didn't change between EJP Man and Laser. They both, it wasn't the greatest runs for either of them, honestly. Like, they both just didn't have pretty underwhelming runs, pretty bad runs for, you know, a week six in the ladder. Like, you don't want to see that. They just, they're lucky to have the buffer of the top rung, plus the top rung, or plus the, you know, second place bonus of being able to stay in the top rung for EJP. So, 229.54, not really what EJP Man's looking for. Kind of similar to Harass Me, where it's a little underwhelming. Um, so, and, and in a match next week where you're probably not winning and you're going to have to fight for week eight, we'll have to see if EJP Man can kind of flip it around to some of those earlier times he was getting the tournament uh, near his PB or PPB in the tournament, literally. So, a little underwhelming. Same with Laser. Obviously, there's a pod fraud miss in there. Which, by the way, Pod Fraud still haunting this tournament. Come on, guys, let's start getting on that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, week seven now you have. Uh, or sorry, I, I totally just blanked. Uh, yeah, laser moving down to the bottom rung. Uh, yeah, let's move on to the predictions. Uh, I'm gonna start with the top rung this time. Usually I go from bottom to top, but I'm gonna start with this rung because this race. I'm not saying this race is for nothing because it really is for. It's for a lot. It's for qualification, but. Jared is the overwhelming favorite once again going into this race, and Jared should get the seven seed here. Like, it would be, it would take a big fluke because you saw the DNF in the one match, like from that Jared had. But besides that, like, I, there shouldn't be another fluke like that again. And even if there was like, if Jared, Jared should be ahead by a lot going to Bestman, so he doesn't need to play Bestman risky at all. Um, that's besides the point. Yeah, Jared should win this match. He should get the seven seed. Obviously, for EJP and Harazmi, the main goal is they've gotten here. This is like a free week where second and third, there's no difference. They are both going to week eight. They're both going to the last rung no matter what. Uh, even on a loss, unless they get promoted, of course. Um, but this should just be a race that you know you're free rolling a chance at the seven seed. Play as best as you can. See how you match up against, you know... EJP Man versus Erasmus. We'll see how that matchup. I don't believe we've ever seen that this tournament. I lied. We saw that once in week four. Uh, but there was it was close, but there was some controversy with Erasmus' PC uh, and like the game not opening yet. But besides all of that, see how he matches up against Erasmus in week seven because likely, um, once again, the battle for second, third is not going to matter. It's going to be all going for first place. I'm going to say Jared wins this match for sure, but. It'll be interesting to see. It's more of a, let's see how EJP Man and Harazmi are doing going into week eight sort of race with, you know, the small potential of high rolling a seven seed, which would be insane if EJP Man and Harazmi won this. That would, you know, I mean, that would be terrible for the guys who are in the bottom rung right now, having Jared in week eight, essentially saying that you're eliminated at that point. But more than likely, Jared's going to get the seven seed here. Uh, and then you have DeHamster, Laser, Revelo. This is going to be the race to watch this week. Um, starting with Revelo, it's not been great as of late in the tournament. Like, I mean, to be fair, his PB is a 232, so you can't expect some insane times from out of him until he's, you know, gotten that PB down. But he's going to need not only a run that's probably better than PB or basically equal to PB, he needs Hamster and Laser to kind of mess up, which, trust me, we have seen this Hamster-Laser matchup so much this tournament. And if you go back, I know this going back so many weeks can, you know is a little bit like, oh, they've improved, they've improved, but th there's been times from Hamster and Laser that have been very, very underwhelming this tournament, starting in week one. Um, Jeez, I'm just trying to find them on the bracket. Like, those are both beatable times for Revelo, but going to be Vardy, he's going to have to beat his PB. Um, let's get 230. 
wherever laser is here. Actually, 229 is pretty solid. 235, 229, 229, 229. So he needs, it's possible he needs a fluke out of both of them. It's possible, but seeing how Hamster got the big PB, laser just PB too, it's going to be tough. Um, Revelo definitely, at this point, anything else is a bonus for him at this point. He's going to just fight as best he can, you know, go full out. He might as well take as many risks as you want. Um, unless you're somehow ahead later on, but might as well just go full out to try to win this. Nothing to lose at this point. Uh, as for Hamster and Laser, this is I, the fourth or fifth time we're seeing them this tournament match up. It's going to be another great race between the two of them. Uh, I'd say, once again, Hamster, just like last time they were playing, Hamster's slightly favored. He's got the 224 right now. He just got a 227 in a race, which is a better time than Laser's PB currently. But definitely not counting out laser again we saw laser beat him last time when there might have been a, a, a bias towards hamster in the race as well this time everything on the line for elimination i'm super super excited for that match um this is like i hope we see another one that comes down to bestman again that would be really really exciting but this should be a really good race between laser and hamster to stay alive and honestly like thinking i actually i'll get to it in a second um but yeah, that, that's kind of want to wrap up the predictions portion. And I wanted to quickly, I created another quick spreadsheet just to show off the race for the eight seed. Um, this is all, I made some theoretical percentages of eight seed on my own opinion. These are my own opinion. And this is on Jared getting this. Like, this is assuming Jared gets the seven seed. Um, these are my percentages, at least what I think. This is like everyone... I think from the beginning of this tournament, because the top eight were so separated, or top seven were so separated, the race for the eight seed and the end of the ladder was going to be one of the most exciting things in the whole tournament, outside of, you know, the top eight uh, final bracket. But this is going to be kind of your main contenders right now and the percentages. Unfortunately, I have to give Revelo just 1% because he's in a race where super unlikely that he wins it and he has to survive. But then he not only has to do that, but then win again next week, which is just in my opinion, super, super unlikely. Um, however, I, you know, he could win one of the weeks. I, I'd say his win percentage this week, maybe is not 1%. His win percentage this week is closer to 5 to 10, maybe. But maybe that's even being too generous. Anyways, um, yeah, Revelo is in a really tough spot. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've seen this tournament. Crazy things have happened, so I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, well, okay, I would be surprised <laughs> if he got the eight seed, but... Uh, you know, it definitely could happen. And then next on the list, I got Laser at 15%. I think Laser, if he were, if he got second place in that race against EJP Man, he probably, it'd be, I think he would be the favorite, in my opinion, to get the, uh, to get the eight seed if he got second in that race with EJP Man. He would probably be the favorite. He, he just got a 227, a low 227. Uh, he's proven to have solid races this tournament. Um, but the reason he's, you know, fourth on this list is because he's got to beat to Hamster and, I mean, and Revelo in the, uh, the week seven match in the bottom rung. And then he's got to win again next week against likely EJP Man and Erasmi. Oh, well, EJP Man and Erasmi. This is all assuming Jared gets the seven seed. Um, so that's why I have him at 15%. Then next is Harazmi, which I would be tempted to put his percentage higher, but... I haven't been as impressed with the runs lately, at least the race times. So I'm a little concerned. Like this week, he's he he has a basically a free pass to the to the to the last week where the eight seed battle will happen. So that's why he's around twenty percent already. And I would say if you you know, I would say I'll give him about a twenty percent chance in that race if he were in theory playing EJP Man into Hamster, um, maybe a little bit less but then add on a little bit because he has some chance at the seven seed. But nonetheless, I think uh, he's definitely got a, a chance, a good shot, a little bit better than Laser because he already has that free pass to the last week. But it's just going to be a really, really tough match no matter what the last week for Erasmi. Uh, but all on the line, it'll be really cool. Uh, next, I got Hamster at 30%. If he were in the top run right now, he would definitely be the outright favorite to get the eight seed. As the, at this very moment. However, he's not in the top rung. He's got to win a match against Laser and Revelo first. And, you know, seeing how close it was with Jablakey last week, 
you know, you never know. Lasers got that very similar PB to Jablakey. Maybe has just as much potential to get massive PBs like Jablakey. So, you know, there's no guarantees that he even gets to that. So that's like, I think it's pretty generous to give him 30% because he has that bottom rung match. Um, but if, you know, if he does get to that top rung, I think I would favor him slightly over EJP Men or Harazmi in a top eight situation. But for now, I put him at 30% due to the fact that he's got to win another match before he even gets to that eight seed match. Which, you know, some people might put him at a higher percent, some might people put him at a lower percent. I put him about 30% chance. And then at the top here, I have EJP Men as the current favorite for the eight seed. He, um, you know, he, sh- he gets a guaranteed pass to the last week, no matter what. Obviously, a high roll chance at the seven seed, but this doesn't really include that because Jared gets the seven in this scenario. And then, you know, I would slightly favor the hamster over him, slightly in a race, but he has the edge because he gets a free pass the week eight. So, I mean, that's kind of my situation, my race for the top eight seeds. You can probably put in the comments who you think is going to get the eight seed as well. Go ahead. Um, but that should be really, really exciting. Uh, the battle for the eight seed is going to be developing over the next two weeks. And then I also wanted to quickly, I put up here the preview of our top eight. I'll go a lot more in depth on this next week, but here's kind of what the bracket looks like right now. If you don't know how this works, the one and the eight will play the four and the five, three and the six, two and seven. And then the winner from the one and eight and four and five will play each other in the semifinals. And the semifinal matches kind of are the top half of the bracket and the bottom half of the bracket. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they're like, you can cut ca- like for someone who hasn't looked at the bracket yet, if you guys don't know, um, this is going to be really, really wild because you have Zach, Evan, and myself on the top half of the bracket, which if you were around for the last tournament, that's three of the top four in the last previous any percent tournament. I know a lot has changed since then, but that's pretty crazy. Uh, you We could see a potential Evan versus Zach matchup in the semifinal, which, you know, a lot of people at the beginning of the tournament probably predicted that as their grand finals and that could be the semi-final match they can't even make it to a final together uh we can see myself versus zach which that's actually would be really interesting we've i I don't think i've ever played zach in a tournament no i don't think i've ever played him in a tournament that would be exciting um and i guess you know you have your eight seed and zach's not playing at the moment so you know we don't know what's going to happen in that match entirely we have to figure out who the eight seed is and then you have the bottom half of the bracket which this match should be a very fun one. I don't want to go too in depth on these because I want to do this next week as well. Get a whole top eight preview, um, or two weeks from now. But I want to do a whole top eight preview. But anyways, yeah, Frost versus Justin is going to be another good match. You know, it's crazy because you're going to have to see uh, for the two matches that we've officially had. And then let's just say Jared gets the seven seed. Three out of these guys: Evan, myself, Frost, Justin, Ginger, Jared. Three of those guys are out round one, which is just bang. You know. There's no double elimination. It's all single elimination. And, you know, it's it's going to really come down to it. Just one race. Anyone can win these matches. It's going to be super, super exciting. Um, but, yeah, top eight's coming up, folks. Anyways, as my headset just dies, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you guys for listening again to another recap. I'll be back next week for week seven plus the week eight match preview. Maybe the final bracket preview. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. I'll figure out some more stuff to talk about next week as well. Uh, Yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one.